section of the state on the football field. The newly named local coach talks about coming back to Jacksonville, taking up the title of head coach, and where he sees his former team heading with new leadership. Plus, the battleground for self-defense laws is right here in Jacksonville. The father of a dead teen tells us his story, and we ask for the view from gun activists, all on This Week in Jacksonville. Gun rights are one, self-defense is another, and yet they seem intertwined in two nationally known cases from here in Florida. One of them involved the Jacksonville family, and this morning, Ron Davis is joining us. Ron's son, Jordan, was killed the day after Thanksgiving at a gas station. Ron is joined by his attorney, John Phillips. Also invited attorney Eric Friday to join us in the conversation. Eric is here on behalf of his client, Florida Carey. So, Ron, let me, let me start by first saying my first opportunity in person to right. tell you, so sorry about your son. Thank I, you. I can only imagine uh, three kids myself. I know our viewers. Uh, it's hard to put ourselves in your shoes with what you've gone through and what you're going through. So let me ask about this this process here. It's been a few months since uh, that day after Thanksgiving, and you've gotten really involved. Has that made it easier to move through the grieving process, or has that just been a distraction? Are it's, you still in the middle of it? It's, it's basically a distraction. It's a distraction. I'm still in the middle of it when... I don't have a distraction in the morning or I don't have a distraction in the, late in the evening, then, you know, the grief comes back, you know, and it creeps upon you. But uh, a lot of, I found a lot of information out ever since his death, and I guess that's what happens to a lot of people in the nation, because if it doesn't involve you personally, a lot of times, you know, a lot of this information uh, is not given to the public. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting because from a, a reporter or a journalist side, we often try to guard ourselves from that, from saying, uh, well, it's just another story, and right. and your story, your son's story, has certainly captured a, a lot of people's uh, hearts in this. So, make clear for me your position on on Florida gun laws, because over the course of this month and a half, couple months here, we've heard you say some things. You want to see some change, is that right? Yes, yes. Uh, no, uh, the there's two uh, two sides, but the uphill battle is to uh, get people to realize that they don't have to carry weapons in public. You know. That's going to be the uphill battle because people feel that e even in their car they need to have a weapon in case something happens. And it's kind of like you, you kind of wish these things upon yourself, you know, because you start seeing things even at a traffic light when somebody gives you the finger or cuts you off, you know, all of a sudden you realize that you have this gun so you, you're okay, you, you know, you're going to do whatever's necessary. If somebody comes over to your car, you're going to take care of that yourself. And in these situations when you don't have a gun, I just believe that the fatality is not going to be there. It's going to be maybe a punch in the lip or something like that. And that's what I want to let people, you know, understand. I know it's your right to carry a weapon. I understand that. But we don't really have to. So do you want to see that right change? Do you, do you want to see the end of a, a concealed carry law in it, Florida? In public, yes. I don't, I don't mind you having it in your home, and then that's fine. You want, you want to protect your home. But it is so many times out in public, situations happen that, uh, just because you think that that's the situation, later on you may find out it was a different situation, but you've used your gun fatally. Uh, for instance, in the uh, Gifford case, you know, the people that were trying to help, you know, take down the gunman, I believe one gentleman said that, you know, he had a carry weapon, right. and he almost shot somebody that was trying to help. Right. And these are the things that happened. You, you, you have a split second to determine who the shooter is and what's going on. And when you have a weapon, sometimes you make the wrong, you know, decision. Right. So, Eric, let me bring you in here. Florida Carry, it's a nonprofit. It's a, a, an organization which uh, you mentioned on the website there, dedicated to advancing fundamental civil right of all Floridians to keep and bear arms. What's Florida Carry say to a position like Mr. Davis has here? You certainly can understand why this is important to a man who's lost his son in a shooting like this. Sure. And our position is tragedies happen. I mean, they, they just do. Bad things happen to good people. But the bottom line is the Second Amendment is there for a reason. We have had several court rulings recently that affirmed the right of a person to have a firearm for their protection and the protection of their family and the right to carry that firearm outside of the house. As one recent judge said, the need for defense is much greater outside the home than it is inside the home. All right. So as this you know, surge comes, hey, some people want to see this change. There's also the, the pushback the people in Florida who say, no, we're, we're not going to allow this to change. Will Florida Carry actively fight any kind of legislation that comes to Tallahassee saying we want to change this? Absolutely. Florida Carry's position is 
people have a right to arm themselves for the defense of themselves and their families, and it is a constitutional right and a God-given right to be to have the right to defend oneself. Yeah. So it's about defense here, John. Let me ask you. I know you're you're representing uh, Mr. Davis's family and, and a couple other people who are involved in this day after Thanksgiving shooting. What's your position on this? I got my concealed weapons permit before I got this case. I've never carried a gun in public. You know, it, it was because it was out of a burglary, and the reason I did was because of fear. And you get to the point where fear has gotten so massive, and everybody's so afraid of each other, and the violence on television, and the violence you see in video games, and the cultures are raised less and less like our grandfathers raised their children, or our great-grandfathers, or our forefathers. And so you're, you're reaching a point where this is an epidemic. It's been an epidemic in the African-American community, but now it's spreading to white churches, and white schools, and, and amongst the country. And so I don't think everybody arming up is, is necessarily the answer. We've got to find reasonable alternatives um, you know, Stevie, Stevie Wonder joked this week that, you know, he could go out and get a, go out and get a gun. And he's probably correct. And that's a joke because a, you don't want necessarily a blind man firing his weapon. Right. Even if, yeah, okay. Eric, anything to say here? And then we're going to move on. We're going to take a short commercial break after this. Well, our position is everybody doesn't have to arm themselves. It's a choice. Everybody has the right to do what they want to do, what they feel they need to do to protect their family. Most of these lawsuits that were brought to enforce the right to keep and bear arms in Chicago and in Washington, D.C., were brought by people who had been victims of crime repeatedly and were tired of it and wanted the ability to defend themselves. Okay. All right, Eric, appreciate that. So uh, we're going to take this break I just told you about. Stand Your Ground is a law that's been the focus of many cases, including another from Florida, Trayvon Martin, killed by George Zimmerman. So next on This Week in Jacksonville, we're going to continue our conversation here. Don't go anywhere. Ron Davis, John Phillips, Eric Friday with us this morning. We'll be right back. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Ron Davis and his attorney John Phillips with us. Eric Friday with us this morning, also representing Florida Carey. Ron, you said before we went to break there, hey, I still want to mention this. I was asking you about some push to make some changes. So on the state level, you said the federal level as well. You want to see some laws enacted or changed. Yes, me and... Uh, Jordan's mother, Lucy McBath, we uh, went to Washington and we met with some congressional leaders. Uh, we met with uh, Nancy Pelosi and uh, we also met with uh, Sheila Jackson Lee from Texas and also Yvette Clark from Brooklyn. And uh, they have a lot of the federal people, the CBC, the Congressional Black Caucus, they're also looking into it. Chairwoman Fudge, they're looking into it also. Uh, the other thing that I was reading though about, uh, as uh, Eric was saying about gun control and, and that they don't want to see any more gun control is that I, I was reading in the 60s, I'm a child of the 60s, and that uh, actually the NRA is actually the one that started gun control when the Black Panthers armed themselves in California. And they're actually the one that started gun control. It's kind of like, uh, depending on who's arming themselves, whether you're for or against gun control. So when the Black Panthers were armed, you know, back in the 60s, nobody wanted to see them walk down the streets with guns. Yeah. You know, nobody wants to see that. Eric, what do you think about that? Florida carries position. We are not the NRA. We are completely independent from the NRA. We have no association with them. I can't speak to Mr. Davis's history uh, that he has. I can tell you that there is definitely a racist basis to gun control. Historically, the southern states used gun control well before the 1960s as a method of uh, in, enforcing Jim Crow that laws. Was, that was race-related. Absolutely. The, Florida's first... Uh, there's actually a Florida Supreme Court opinion from the 1940s where the, one of the justices on the Florida Supreme Court states explicitly that the entire purpose of Florida's initial gun control laws was to control the black populations, and wow. he uses a different word, right. but to control wow. the back po black populations in the turpentine and lumber camps and to control the violence that came from those populations. So That's, times have changed since then, hopefully. Our society has changed, right? So does there need to be a corresponding change in in the laws. I would say that the entire premise of gun control is people control. 
it is, it is about the control of the people. Gun con, gun, the Second Amendment exists for the right of an armed populace. Uh, one of our, well, there's a popular saying among Second Amendment act, activists that an armed person is a citizen, an unar unarmed person is a subject. How about that? Ron, John, you want to weigh in on this? Yeah, you know, the issue, and I agree, people control. You know, but the problem is, you know, you've got a, a gentleman like Michael Dunn, and we're not really getting into that case, but somebody who, before the shooting, may have been a member, I don't know if he was a member of Florida Carey, but certainly a member of the NRA, and they would have propped him up as a responsible gun owner but for a moment of loud music and temporary insanity, whatever, you know, however you define that, you know, then he has this moment. And the problem is we're all headed more into that direction where that instantaneous impulsive reaction and lack of value of hu human life is, is intersecting. Well, and, you know, Thomas Jefferson said that, you know, the Constitution, our body of laws should change every generation or so to, to be able to soak in Look, we, we came from a racist society, and, you know, now we've got to integrate more, and I don't know that you have to force that integration through violence. Uh, so I, I do want us to talk just a little bit about Stand Your Ground. I know that nothing is formal yet, but the man accused in, in Jordan's death, uh, we understand, may choose the Stand Your Ground defense. There's this other case, Trayvon Martin, who was uh, killed last year, right. um, and the person who pulled the trigger there saying that Stand Your Ground is... is the defense that George Zimmerman is going to use. So do you see that as something that needs to change? There's certainly a lot of talk about that, and there's a lot of uh, pressure, I think, coming to Tallahassee to at least discuss that. I think that should change. Number one, the worst part of it to me is that you have one judge that's deciding the case rather than a jury. I mean, if the judge decides that stand your ground uh, is going to be implemented, then you, you never get to a jury. You know, even in the civil part of it, you never get to a jury. In other words, he decides that one, he or she decides whether it's stand your ground. And once he or she, as a judge, says it's it stand your ground, it's over. Without, Everything is over. Without me even being able to be heard on the civil suit, Ron's rights is a wrongful death, you know, over the wrongful death of his son, or the, the passengers in that vehicle for the, the threat of harm that they had, those, are, those civil rights are extinguished as soon as as soon as, you know, the, the judge decides that this may be a stand-your-ground case. So, Eric, Florida Carey's position here, stand-your-ground, does it need to be tweaked? I've heard some of that, too, that maybe it needs to be more carefully defined when you can stand your ground. I have not seen a case or a valid argument yet for any necessary change in the law to, to weaken it from what it is now. The fact is, judges always have certain powers in our justice system. They have the power to issue a judgment of acquittal, notwithstanding the verdict of a jury. So a judge can always acquit, notwithstanding the verdict of a jury. So the idea that somehow having one judge have the power to right. declare somebody to be immune, it, it's, it's not that unusual a situation. Eric, let me, we need to wrap up after this, but what would convince you or convince Florida Carey that there needs to be a change today? I would need to see that guns are being used to harm good people more than they're being used to defend good people. The fact is, uh, st studies by the Florida State University professor, Gary Kleck, have shown time and again that the basic fact is guns are much more likely to be used to defend somebody than they are to, be, to harm somebody. Less than 1% of guns are used in criminal activity. Eric Friday, here for Florida Carey. Ron Davis and uh, John Phillips here talking about this. This is a really heated issue, and I appreciate that we were able to talk through this, right. what's the word, civilly, you know, <laughs> yeah. friendly discourse or whatever. It's something that obviously our lawmakers are going to have to hear from us and hear the various positions as we go forward. I appreciate your time so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we promised you some fire and ice, the new and the old. Mark Brunel is joining us when we come back on This Week in Jacksonville.